Kenya's central bank cut its central bank rate by 350 basis points to 13 percent, broadly in line with market expectations, as inflationary pressures declined and the exchange rate remained stable. Now joining us for more insight is Steve Biko, director at Hidalgo Group. A very good afternoon uh, to you, Steve. Now the question here is whether did you expect that uh, 350 basis points are cut there? Uh, to be honest, uh, today this, I mean, today Central Bank have actually decided to actually be able to come out and, um, you know, give a gift to bank borrowers because in the morning most of us were actually predicting a, a cut of between 150 to 200, uh, 250 basis points. So what came out today is basically, given what the macroeconomic indicators are, looking at the key fundamentals, we are able to see that our central bank decided to be very bold because most of us have been very conservative, very cautious, given the issues that um, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of myriad of uh, undercurrents are still there. But we saw that our central bank is very keen on actually being able to push forward with uh, its agenda to ensure that um, there's um, availability of uh, credit in the market, especially for borrowers and of a small and medium enterprise kind of business to be able to do their work. So no, most of us, didn't, we expected uh, some cut, but not to the level of uh, 350 basis points. Looking at that uh, 350 basis points cut, could we perhaps see a further cuts like that going forward or the central bank, will they be holding back? I think, uh, Looking at the macroeconomic indicators, everything is very positive at the moment. I must say that uh, the moves and the measures that have been taken by the bank initially in terms of being able to caution uh, the inflationary uh, pressures on, on, on the economy, looking at uh, the, the foreign exchange reserves, looking at the, the, the stability of the shilling, looking at um, food and fuel uh, indicators and, and food and, and f uh, fuel indicators, everything is actually becoming very stable. We're able to see that uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, the central bank has been able to actually be able to issue and implement physical policy to, to the letter. The, the execution and, and, and the implementation framework has actually been followed to the letter. So we're able, we're able to see that if this continues, then we expect more, cutting, more cuts in the, in, in, in the interest rates. The, and however, the only issue is um, how banks are going to actually respond to Point this. To because the at the end of the day, we've been able to see that um, this is actually going to affect the you know, profit margins. Indeed. So we're I see... I was going to say, it's going to make uh, borrowers very happy and uh, whether we'll see uh, banks uh, cutting back on their lending rates is, is another question that needs to be asked. Could we perhaps see uh, banks uh, following on this uh, central bank move? It's expected. I mean, when you look at the, the issue that uh, inflation has gone down, uh, we're looking at uh, most of the indicators have actually dropped to single digit, which is very good. We, we're seeing uh, stable macroeconomic indicators. But the question is, uh, for now at the moment, we've seen that, uh, that the issue of avail availability of credit is important. Now even customers actually say that it's time for them to go and be able to borrow money from the bank. But the question is, will the, actually the banks actually be able to reduce it? But I see that banks that want to actually show up their, their loan you know, the loan portfolio will actually be more willing to reduce it so it can be able to welcome in customers. So I, I foresee a situation whereby banks are going to be falling all over themselves to be able to reduce the, the, the lending rates, to be in tandem with them, with what's been actually happening today, the, the, the central bank lending rates, so that they can be able to bring in their customers because most of the banks have been having an issue with the loan portfolio. So yes, banks are going to be falling all over each other to do this, but the question is, which is going to be the first bank to do this? Indeed, and it's also about the implications on the market on the whole. We're just talking to my other guest about the fixed income market. We're likely to see most investors moving from the fixed income market uh, to the equity market. So the overall impact of this 350 basis point a cut on the overall economy uh, it's the, the decision today is actually offers a mixed fortune for the market because on one end it's actually seeing many people uh, you know opting to get into the equities as an option the huge bargains in the equities place and right now given that the, the, the drop in the interest rates we're able to see the equities offer better return however in terms of our uh, availability of credit for supporting business and being able to create more jobs and, and create you know what you call circulation of capital the the move is actually very good so we're able to see that uh, one disadvantage on one end will be an advantage on the other end however it all depends on what the players will actually what the, the loopholes available and how the, the players can be able to take advantage of this and be able to move forward because we've been able to see that our foreign investors have been the key movers of the market mm -hmm. and they've been able to move from the fixed income mm -hmm aspect into the equities. The, the question is, what will the local investors be doing? Mm -hmm. Are we still going to be holding back our money as we, we're able to monitor a few other 
fundamentals that are going to affect the future of the markets or are we going to actually take advantage of this and also get into the equities? Well, that's where we have to leave it. Thank you so much for joining us. Steve Biko from Hidalgo Group joining us from our studios in Kenya.